Joining us live now is the Queensland Premier, Stephen Miles. Uh, Premier, good to see you. Thanks for your time on a busy morning. You are there on the ground now. How would you describe the damage and devastation that you've seen so far? Well, good morning and thanks for having me. Uh, here in Cairns, uh, things are actually uh, back to, uh, largely back to normal, but north of here, uh, there's significant damage to roads. We still have 35 isolated communities and the army is continuing to evacuate that community of Woodjil Woodjil and getting them to safety in Cooktown. Yeah, so we did hear from Murray Watt a short time ago. He spoke from a federal point of view when it comes to sending uh, ADF today, where they will be. From a state perspective, though, where are you sending those assets this morning, uh, Premier? <sighs> Uh, so we have, uh, so the, the, those army helicopters were able to help us to get emergency crews into all of those isolated communities and their focus today is on, on identifying what they need, what their uh, energy, water, sewerage assets, uh, how they're operating as well as uh, how they are for uh, food and, uh, and fresh drinking water. So uh, that's the focus today. Oh, sorry, also healthcare obviously. So they're, they're assessing all of those things and then we'll be able to respond by dropping uh, those resources into mm -hmm. those communities or by evacuating people if we need to get them to a hospital or to a safer place. So do you expect all of those evacuations, the remaining evacuations from Wujil Wujil and also those hundreds of people who are still stranded in the Daintree, they'll have uh, food, fuel, water, etc., able to be dropped to them. All of this kind of sorted by the end of the day. Is that your expectation? Yeah, certainly, certainly we would hope so, to have all of those uh, essentials of life to people or to have evacuated them if uh, they don't have safe accommodation where they are. Uh, we've moved really quickly once uh, the sky is cleared enough for it to be safe for the pilots to fly the helicopters. And they, they, they did a really great job uh, yesterday getting most of that task done and they'll be able to finish it off today. Uh, I know it's early days, but have you got an estimate on what this will cost, Premier? Oh, look, it is early days. We've only assessed nearly a couple of hundred properties, but uh, more of that will happen today, and so we'll know more by the end of, end of the day. I've seen a lot of natural disasters in Queensland, though, and, you know, I'd, I'd expect that we're talking billions rather than hundreds of millions. Sure. Murray Watt also said there will likely be more disaster payments down the track. Are you looking at extra state contributions as well? Yeah, we will be, and we'll want to uh, discuss that with the Australian government. We'll both make contributions mm. uh, to that assistance. They've uh, provided additional hardship assistance that's available at 2 o'clock today. We've got teams helping people to apply for both the funds that we administer as well as, 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 well as those, but uh, there will be a much bigger package uh, to support people through the, uh, through the major stages of the recovery. Right, right now, our funding largely goes to local government to help them with the clean-up. OK. I mean, it's you just... You, your heart bleeds for businesses, particularly tourist businesses in the Far North Premier, uh, particularly after only just bouncing back from COVID. We've spoken to some of those businesses as well. It, will there be um, extra funding for, for those businesses caught up in this again, or will that just kind of be spooked up, uh, spook, scooped up in, the, in, in what you just said in the previous answer? No, look, I expect there will be an assistance package for affected businesses. Uh, that's certainly what we're discussing and how we can support the tourism industry. But the number one thing people watching around the country can do is think about having a holiday up here. As I say, uh, Cairns is pretty much open for business, but there's not many yeah. people at those businesses. They've not had the tourist arrivals. And so if, you th if you're still thinking about what kind of holiday you want uh, over the Christmas break, uh, think about coming to Cairns. I brought my family here last Easter and, and we had a ball out on the reef in uh, we did the Coranda Sky Rail go karts. There's so much. There's so much to do. It's a great spot for a holiday. Yeah, it, it sure is. But how, I mean, how long do you, there's still access roads uh, that are going to be blocked off going to places like Port Douglas uh, for a little while. I mean, how do you, how long do you expect this as a whole to, to take to get cleaned up? Uh, look, we'd hope to have access to Port Douglas pretty quickly, but uh, the, some of these uh, roads are very, very badly damaged. And so our road workers did an incredible job getting uh, the Bruce open to Cairns yesterday morning. Like, that was a mammoth effort considering uh, the level of this 
uh, the level of this uh, this disaster. We'll get the, the other roads open as quickly as we can. Uh, but the airport into Cairns uh, is open. Cairns yeah. hotels and restaurants and businesses, they're all open. So if, uh, if people want to come here, they should. OK, yeah. And just finally, much has been made about the Bureau of Meteorology. And uh, I spoke to Murray Watt about this a short time ago as well. I mean, predicting weather is an inexact science. But the fact that an office was taken out of Cairns, that might have helped with a better forecast here. So would you consider reinstating the Bureau of Meteorology office in Cairns or something of that nature? Yeah, so the Australian Government runs the Bureau of Meteorology. We have invested a lot in, in improving uh, weather gauges and, and uh, measurement facilities right across the state, actually. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, having sat in that disaster committee with the Bureau team every single day. Uh, they, they work as hard as they can and provide the best predictions they can. Part of the problem here was that we saw uh, a, a, the kind of, a kind of rain event that we've never experienced before at a time of year that we've never seen it before. Uh, and it flooded homes that have never flooded before. And I know that home, people who live in homes that have experienced flooding before know that a flood warning applies to them. If your house has never flooded, then you, you don't tend to think uh, that alert means you should get out of your house. And so, uh, look, that made it hard uh, throughout, that, uh, throughout that night. But I know that the Bureau uh, does their very very best. Uh, they, they couldn't have predicted the level of rain at the time uh, that it arrived. But we did have active warnings through that entire period and we did warn that there would be heavy rainfall, flash flooding in the wake of the cyclone. So the broader, the broader warning was correct. It was just that, uh, that sudden torrential rain. And I was talking to to locals here on the ground at that time, people who've lived in Cairns all their life and they were saying they'd never seen anything like yeah. it. So uh, I think it's a bit hard to to expect the Bureau to predict something that we've never experienced before. Oh, OK. Um, Stephen Miles, the Queensland Premier, appreciate your time and a busy morning. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon.